In this video we will be looking at negative numbers and how to apply their rules. Now a lot of people get confused between the rules when it comes to dealing with different operations. So multiplication and division, uh, these rules can be applied in a very simple way. So for example, when we have two pluses or two positive numbers, then we can determine the outcome and it's going to be, going to be a positive number. Likewise if we have two negative numbers, so a double negative will make a positive. When the signs are different to each other, so a plus and a minus, the outcome is always going to be negative. And that's the same if it's the other way around, so a negative and a positive makes a negative. So a short way to remember it is, if the operations are the same, it's going to be positive, and if they're different, it's going to be negative. Now, let's look at some examples with uh, multiplication and division. So minus 2 times minus 3. Now here, we have two negatives. So we know the outcome is going to be positive, looking at our rules again up here, so this one. And once we've discovered what the sign is going to be, so positive or negative, then we just simply multiply the numbers together. So 2 times 3, our, our answer is going to be positive 6. Now the next one, we have a positive number and a negative number. So because they're different, our answer is going to be negative. So 6 times 4, overall we're going to get minus 24. Okay, minus 5 times by 4. Again, we have a negative number and a positive number. So when there's no symbol there, you can assume that it's positive because that's just what normally happens. So again, we have a minus and a positive, so our outcome is going to be a negative. Um, so 5 times 4, final answer, minus 20. Okay, now for the division, the same rules apply, we just divide instead of times at the end. So, positive and a negative, our answer is going to be negative. 12 divided by 3 is just 4. Minus 27 divided by minus 9. So here we have double negative. We have two negative numbers. So our answer is going to be positive because they're the same. 27 divided by 9 is 3. So that is our answer. Now addition and subtraction is slightly different. And a lot of people get confused between these. So our rules still stand. But you apply them in a slightly different way. So here we can't actually predetermine what our answer is going to be. So yes, we do have a negative and a positive, but the way that you answer these ones is I always find a number line is best. So if we take our number line and we center it at zero, um, we want to look at this number as our starting point. So we can take, for example, minus six. Minus six is about there if zero is there. And what we want to do is we then want to just add eight to it. So we can go up eight steps. So we know six steps is going to take us back to zero. And then from there, we have to go on an additional two. And that's just going to simply be a positive two. So now if we take the next one, we can draw out our number line again. This time, we have something slightly different. So again, we can label on our zero. And our starting point this time is going to be at minus two. So minus two, we can draw on there. So this is where we can apply our negative number rules. So you can see we have two negatives next to each other. And in this case, this would become a positive. So we're adding four to the minus two. So again, we can go up two places to get back to zero. And from there, we need to add on an additional two because it's four in total. So our final answer is going to be positive two, again, as a coincidence. For the final one, we want to draw our number line again. Let's put zero in the middle, and this time our starting point is three. So we can draw a three on over here, and here we have next to each other a positive and a negative. So overall this is going to become a negative because of our rules that we discussed at the start. So we have three take away five. Now because we're taking away this time, we need to go down the number line instead of up it. So again, I always find going to zero is the first step makes it nice and easy. So because we started at three, it's going to take three steps to the left to get back to zero. And then on top of that, because we have five steps in total, we need to go back an additional two, going to take us to minus two. Thank you for watching and I hope that was helpful.